Good afternoon or evening, everybody. We're going to talk about DBFS and DBU. In this particular instance, we're going to talk about interfacing an analog device with a digital device and uh, getting DBFS in the mix and seeing what it is, why we have to worry about it, and how to best optimize a connection between an analog device and a digital device. So let's go for a really quick example. Um, let's say you're recording a recital and uh, you have to use a Mackie 1202 VLZ 3 mixer, a uh, small compact, small format mixer. And let's say you're going to be using a Tascam HDR1 digital recorder. So even if for a very simple setup like this, we still have to look at what we're going to and what we're going from. So here we have a just you know regular old Mackie mixer, nothing real fancy. And um, over here the Tascam HDR1 uh, solid state digital recorder, so it records on the memory cards. So this is a very common setup that you might see, or maybe you already have it, or know of someone that's using something very similar. So, um, so what we're going to do is see, all right, what do we have to do to connect these two devices? Should be really simple, right? Well, maybe. So we're going to connect these things, but obviously the Mackie mixer being an analog device is going to live in the DBU world whereas the Tascam HDR1 its meters are going to be in DBFS so how do we mix those two? How do we know what is what? Well the first thing we have to do is figure out what DBFS is uh, that's really the maximum input level of that digital device so that the, the, the Tascam HDR1 is the device that we have to kind of convert back to DBU because we want everything to be on the same common denominator. In this case it's going to be DBU because that's what the Mackie works in. Obviously Mackie not being a digital device uh, will not have a, uh, a scale in terms of DBFS. And since every digital device is different we have to figure out what uh, what DBFS equals in terms of DBU for every single digital device. In this case the Tascam. So if we look at the spec sheet, let's go back here to the website on Tascam's website here, and we can scan it and we can take a look at some things here. And um, what's kind of funny is that if we just look at the basic spec sheet here, we'll see, all right, it gives us some information. Okay, it's got connectors and cables and everything. We'll flip down to this one, record time, inputs and outputs. But it doesn't really tell us the information we need. What we're really looking for is actual levels and it just tells us here you know line input connector RCA or mic line input R uh, XLR it doesn't really tell us what levels we're worrying about so in this case this little three page spec sheet is pretty useless so we really have to dig into the owner's manual which again is also on the website so we scroll down here and look for the owner's manual so don't give up on things if you can't find it on the tech spec sheet uh, you may have to dig into the actual owner's manual to find the info you need so I've opened up the owner's manual and gone to the appropriate page here. And as we can see for the mic line input, going down here, maximum level is plus 28.2 dBU. Well, that's good. It even gives us impedance and everything else, so we can figure all that out if we really wanted to. Uh, but keep in mind, too, this maximum level is for the mic line input. If you're going with the other line input, or the RCA inputs, um, the max input level is plus 6 dBV, the 1 volt reference, as opposed to the 0.775 volt reference for dBU. So depending on how you connect this thing, it could be uh, very, very different. Um, so 0 dBFS is going to equal 28.2 dBU if you connect it to the analog balanced XLR input or 0 dBFS could only equal plus 6 dBV via the RCA inputs. Now since dBV and dBU are different, well, let's uh, let's figure out what they really are in all in terms of dBU. Let's go to our calculator here and I have a little cheat sheet here so you can convert uh, dBV back to volts in case you forgot how to do that. So we'll, uh, let's figure this out. Let's see what uh, what 0 dBFS is in terms of DBU when we connect via the RCA inputs. Not that you'd ever do that, but it's just an exercise for uh, to make sure you know how to do this. So we take 10 
to the power of, in this case, the dBV, which is plus 6, 6 divided by, we look at our formula, divided by 20, in parentheses here, equals, that will give us, well, looks like 2 volts, 1.9. We're going to round up in this case. So, <coughs> if we remember how to uh, convert uh, voltages to, uh, to dBU, yep, it's going to be a 20 times, oh, of course I'm going to use the uh, Windows calculator, so I have to do things in a little bit different order. It's going to be 20 log of the value over the reference, so it's going to be 20 log of 2 volts divided by 0.775 volts. So let's do the 2 divided by 0.775. That gives us 2.58. We're going to take the logarithm of that, and we're going to multiply that by 20. So hopefully if you followed that, that gives us our dBU value of 8.234 uh, dBU. So yeah, 8.23 dBU is the value, is the maximum input, input level uh, <coughs> if we're using the RCA inputs. Obviously, that's a little bit different than plus 28. It's uh, 20 dB difference, almost exactly 28 d uh, 20 dB difference. So, depending on how you connect this thing, it could be very, very different. So now that we know what maximum input levels um, the Tascam can, can handle, Let's go and take a look at uh, the Mackie. Again, we're going to pull up the spec sheets here. And, uh, yep, this is the Mackie here, and I just scrolled down the website and looked for the owner's manual. And uh, Well, I started with the spec sheet just to see if it was, uh, to see if it would have what we needed. And sure enough, uh, this one actually gives us the maximum levels. Tape in, mic in, all other inputs, main XLR, R, main XLR out, and the all other outputs. So again, depending on which output you use of the Mackie, it could be very different. Let's say you only have, um, oh, let's say maybe you have like a quarter inch cable and you don't have your XLR cables for whatever reason. Um, then you would have to use uh, perhaps um, this plus 22 dBU output as opposed to the main mix XLR outs which have a maximum output level of plus 28 dBU. So that brings us to the question. All right. Well, what if we uh, take the Mackie 1202 to the HDR1 via quarter-inch TS out to RCA? Because those are that's certainly a viable option. If we look here in the spec sheet here, and we're going to scroll down to the final page here. Okay, because on the back, obviously, we have these. These are the plus 28 dBU outputs right here on the back. Those are our XLRs. Now these on the top here, these balanced slash unbalanced outputs here, this says main out. Yeah, these are main out, but they're not the XLR out. So these are only going to be plus 22 dBU. So, again, making sure we know what we're doing. <coughs> this is plus 22 out. The RCA inputs uh, can only handle plus 8. So, um, there's a 14 dB difference here that we're going to have to uh, be concerned with. That the uh, Mackie could very easily overload those RCA inputs. If we go XLR to XLR, the Mackie has a max output of 28 dBU, and uh, the HDR1 has a max input level of uh, plus 28.2. So actually, this is really the perfect situation right here, because it uh, perfectly matches the maximum output matches the maximum input. So that's great. If we go XLR to RCA, again, not that you would ever really do this, but you know, as an exercise in, um, in poor audio, we're going to figure out what that would be anyway. And going from plus 28 to a plus 8 input, that's a difference of 20 dB. So it's going to be real easy for you to overload that input as well. And uh, let's say if it went from the quarter inch TS outs to the XLR inputs of the Tascam. Uh, in this case, uh, this maximum output is plus 22. This maximum input is plus 28. So there's actually a 6 dB of free headroom, if you will, on the recorder that um, you actually may never get to use. So you're going to be recording 
less signal and more noise. You won't be maximizing that signal to noise ratio. Yeah, you'll never uh, overload it, but um, you're not going to be able to record the optimum signal either. So, in this case, we got really lucky that um, the XLR to XLR works out really well, but um, again, you have to be uh, very careful and just check to make sure that uh, you, know, you may need to turn the trim up or down of a of the particular input. So let's say, yeah, what if we did only go from the quarter inch TS out to XLR? What are our options? Well, let's see here. In the Tascam, <coughs> we can see that the trim control here actually gives us um, some ability to manage that. Um, looks at the uh, maximum trim here, the, the nominal levels, so looks like it'll give us some uh, some level change there. So we're going to have to investigate, you know, nominal level with pad, nominal level, so is this minus 28, plus 12. We're going to have to see what that really is. So, you know, just to be sure, since we have the equipment, it would really be good to loop the uh, LavTech TS1, send a test signal in there, and see, okay, what is this thing outputting um, when I have the uh, the trim knob on the front of this thing turned all the way up? Or what if I have it turned it all the way down? So, let's see on the front here, knobs and indicators and everything else. Let's see if we can find some of the some of the switches on this thing here. Controls, indicators, and connections. All right, that's the back of it. Let's see if we can find the front. Yeah, the manuals are always a lot of fun to search through, right? So, okay. Let's see on here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Now this thing, the left and the right, looks like this may be uh, some trim control here. So what we're going to want to do is send the LavTech into this at a calibrated signal and then read it out into the LavTech. So we're going to loop a signal in and then take the output right back into the LavTech and see, uh, what is this? Is this an attenuator only? Does it boost the signal? Whatever it is. So that's a way to help calibrate that signal uh, from a known source to go into this so we know actually what the heck these knobs are doing because they're not labeled they're not labeled like oh minus three or plus three or oh is this really plus twelve or is that plus fifteen or is it just not attenuating at all so should we have these knobs always turned up just to pass through a signal without attenuation we don't really know so I mean these knobs are pretty useless in terms of uh, the, the labeling on there it doesn't tell us really anything so there again the law text really helpful it can help you solve some of these interface issues if you don't get really lucky and have something that matches perfectly in terms of uh, having uh, an output feed and input then uh, the maximum levels uh, perfectly match. So there you have it. Hope this helped. See you next time.